Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Welcome to Viewpoint, I'm Doug Petcash. They say all good things must come to an end. For me, that goes for my 16 years here at KTVB and my nearly eight years as host of this program. I have thoroughly enjoyed sharing topics on politics, government, current affairs, and culture just about every Sunday since my very first show, January 10th of 2016, which was a dual topic viewpoint on ranching issues and the constitutional authority of presidential executive orders to my most recent show on August 13th, which was a conversation with Governor Brad Little on the big issues in Idaho government this summer. The show is called Viewpoint, so I've focused on getting my guests' viewpoint on the topic of the day, not to share my viewpoint on the subject. I've always approached the show as an opportunity for you to hear in depth from our government leaders and policymakers about the decisions they're making that affect your lives. It's also an opportunity, perhaps, to learn about something you didn't know. Maybe that's about a Basque musician getting national recognition, the many nonprofits making profound differences in our communities, or a peek behind the curtain, behind the scenes at Zoo Boise. It has been a pleasure. Today is my last viewpoint. I want to take a moment to thank you for tuning in every Sunday, or maybe once in a while, as you would. I know there are a lot of things going on in your lives and in our beautiful state that you could be taking care of or doing instead. So thank you for watching. I'm just the latest in a line of men and women to host Viewpoint, including Mark Johnson, Dee Sarton, David Oliver, Rod Grammer, and the man who started it all, Sal Seleski. As I took over from Mark and Dee as host, it is now my turn to pass the torch, and I believe I am leaving Idaho's longest-running public affairs program in very capable hands. The new host and anchor of Viewpoint is KTVB chief political reporter Joe Paris. That is why he is now sitting in the anchor chair, and I'm in the guest chair today, Joe. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you, and I, I just want to first thank you. I mean, I, I don't know how many people at home, you know, follow our careers and our interactions, but I started in 2016 on the KTVB Morning Show. Yeah. And you were the very first person in the building that I came into on my first day of work, and I didn't know what I was doing at all. <laughs> and to think back to that first time where you and I interacted in the newsroom, and through really, I guess, the last eight years, everything I've learned from you, to be sitting here, for me personally, is very cool because you were my mentor, you are my mentor, just because you're going to Ohio, it doesn't change anything. So <laughs> I feel very lucky to be sitting here, very fortunate that I've had people like you to mentor me along the, the wild world of Idaho politics. But uh, I grew up watching Meet the Press every single Sunday with my dad. I loved watching Tim Russert every single week and mm -hmm. to be part of a program like this means a lot yeah. to me, Doug. I was gonna say, how does it feel to be the next host and you see the names that have been on this program. Well, I think the legacy that you're a part of and Mark Johnson and Dee Sarton and Sal Seleski, of course, it's it's developed a place here that we're able to talk about things in depth. The people that are making the news, the people that Idahoans need to hear from. And there's just such a great backbone of this show that's been set up for me. I feel very fortunate. Um, you know, they say we stand on the shoulders of giants. Well, that's what I feel like. You know, this show is built. There's a reason this is the longest running public affairs show in state history. Yeah. Because it is an important show and it's a very part of the fabric of this place. And I, 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 it's a lot of pressure, but I am very excited to be part of it. That's good. And so what do you think your focus is going to be? I mean, it has its, its genre, so to speak, but how are you going to move it forward? I think, uh, to me, Viewpoint, and you and I have talked about this off air, Viewpoint means a lot to me in, in the way that it meant to you in terms of public affairs, hearing from people that are elected officials, holding them accountable. And I think when I watch the work that, that you did and you do and continue to do and what Dee Sarton and Carolyn Holly and all the great reporters and anchors of Channel 7 of the past, I like the way that we've done things here. I think we ask the tough questions. We ask the questions that aren't always fun to ask, but there's a reason why we have to ask them. And I, I think that I just follow your mold, frankly. Now, I also think there will be opportunities for us to do some new things here on Viewpoint and kind of yeah. turn the page with a, with a new host, but um, I, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of this. All right, I'm in the guest chair. Now you're As the I guest. Said, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm done asking questions. That's, that, uh, I'm not promising, but that's probably my last question here okay. on Viewpoint. My first question for you, Doug, what's it like sitting in that chair right now? What are you thinking about? Um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's different. I'm not used to being the one who's answering the questions, for one, but I, I, it, it feels good to be here because I know that with you in that chair that the show's in good hands. And so I'm proud to, to be able to pass that to you. And as you said, you know, the last eight years working so closely together, it feels right. Do you remember when you took me to the Capitol in 2016? No. I just followed you there. You were just kind of being kind, and I could tell at the time that I don't think you really had to be there for anything, but 
It was something you just had to stop by for, and I, I just was like, I'll meet you there. Introduce you to some people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now them, you know them all. And now I know them, and they will be guests <laughs> on the show very soon. Well, let, let's look back a little bit on, on okay. Viewpoint and your, your career here. Um, politics, of course, is a main focus here on Viewpoint. When you think back on the episodes, all the big names, all the, all the big interviews, the tough questions, what does it mean to you sitting at this desk when you, you know, are asking the questions that hold people accountable? Um, first of all, access. Yeah. You know, I, I feel um, very, uh, I guess, privileged to have been able to have access to our leaders, um, Governor Little, Governor Otter, Senators Risch and Crapo, Congressman Labrador at, at first when I was starting here, now Congressman Fulcher, Congressman Simpson, to be able to ask them the questions and to hear from them in depth. But also, you know, you look at other state leaders too, um, superintendents of public instruction speakers of the house, lieutenant governors. Um, and so it, it, I always wanted people to be able to learn something. And so um, about something that maybe affects their lives, but also that, so that they might get to know their leaders a little bit better as human beings as well. And of course, we're sitting at this beautiful desk in this beautiful set, but <laughs> not so long ago, we were sitting over there in a, in a much different looking set. And of you, course, yeah. during COVID, you did a lot of Zoom interviews. Yeah. Um, the I guess the changes for viewpoint over a year through COVID through a pandemic. What was that like? Wow, doing them by Zoom was was certainly a, a sign of the times. But I think, you know, COVID was such an interesting period because we all adjusted to it. But I think viewpoint was a really important conduit to get information out about COVID yeah. um, and the coronavirus and protections and the government steps that were being taken. Um, I think it was two and a half years that I did shows that had some element of COVID in them, even if it wasn't directly like talking with state epidemiologist Christine Hahn about, you know, the latest strain and, and how the, you know, the, the Department of Health and Welfare was dealing with it. But I mean, talking to musicians, talking to other people, business owners or charities who weren't able to do things in person and, you know, how that virus affected them yeah. and, you know, how they adjusted. And so I think it was, you know, really a key way of getting that information out. Of course, politics is huge here on Viewpoint. That will not be changing uh, with the new host, but it's also about the community across Idaho. Yeah. And I know that you've had some favorite guests over the years mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, they've opened your eyes to new opportunities. They have, and I, you know, I love music. Yeah. And so uh, I had an opportunity to uh, interview uh, Dan Ansadegi, who is a Basque musician um, back in 2019 when he was awarded a National Heritage Fellowship, fellowship for his dedication to uh, performing and preserving Basque music, and he went to Washington, D.C. to receive that honor. And we do have a clip from that show when, when he showed us a little bit of his skill. Let's take a look at this. Well, would you do us the honor of, of playing some music? Sure. <laughs> talk about favorite viewpoint Skill, episodes yeah. too what's that when we talk about favorite viewpoint episodes too it's not just about the people it's about the animals too <laughs> yeah really early on i think it was in march of 2016 um we did a show completely from zoo boise it was they were in a transition period it was their 100th anniversary zoo point actually we yeah we started calling it zoo point here because we went all over the zoo we went behind the scenes and um you know one of my favorite things about that episode <laughs> was getting to feed the lemurs. And so we have a clip of that. that Lemur well. clip, let's see this, Andy. Okay, we're about to feed the ringtail lemurs. Now I'm wearing a mask and gloves so that we don't take the chance of potentially passing tuberculosis on to these animals. Steve Burns has already had his tuberculosis test this year, so he's safe, but this is just stick out my hand and go. Ahead, and go. This is their treat. This isn't obviously the main part of their diet. This is dessert. He's just holding on, he's holding on. So these guys are primates. They're not monkeys. Their brains aren't big enough to be monkeys. They live in Madagascar, which is the only place on earth that they're found. Yeah, that was pretty cool because Steve actually warned me before I fed the uh, lemur. He said, no, when you put your hand out, it's gonna grab your hand. He said, don't, 
<laughs> jerk your hand away. And so that was pretty cool. It was like, you know, just stay calm. And they were so cute and everything. But, um, you know, that was before, like, the Gorongosa exhibit yeah. that's so huge now is the big new part of the zoo. That was all in the planning stages and being worked on. So it's been fun to see how the zoo has transitioned from that. And it's also, you know, uh, a huge supporter of conservation efforts in Mozam and Gorongosa Park in Mozambique. There's that partnership. Some of the admission goes to help those efforts. So that was fun. Yeah. Well, in classic Doug Petcash fashion, I'm just going to break the fourth wall here. Doug did not want this whole show to be about him. He wanted us to continue viewpoint right. and to go into a real topic. So coming up after the break here in a minute, Secretary of State Phil McGrain is here to talk about a whole collection of things, including the primary situation, the caucus situation, and new voter registration guidelines here in the state of Idaho. But Doug, before we move on, okay. before we say goodbye, there is a video I would like to play <laughs> real quickly. Some people that want to say a few things to you. Oh. Congratulations, Doug, as you embark on this next venture in your life. It's been a pleasure and an honor to work with you professionally, as well as get to know you personally. The exposure you have provided to us in Parks and Recreation will always be something we'll remember. Again, best of luck in Columbus, Ohio, and we will miss you. Doug, I wanna say congratulations, but also we're so sad to see you go. Your 15 years here in Boise has been filled with incredible storytelling, interviews, and more. I always knew that while the interviews with you would be tough, they'd be so thorough and ultimately really fun because you asked great questions, got to the meat of issues, welcomed the community perspective in, and then helped us tell the story of Boise. So best of luck on your next adventure. Thanks for your service here. We'll miss you. Have fun. Well, let's start here. Doug, we're gonna miss you here in Idaho. Idaho's loss is certainly Ohio's gain. And uh, we wish you Godspeed in the, in the new situation. The thing I've always appreciated about Doug is he was so affable. He's just friendly. And we always got along very well in, in my capacity as Lieutenant Governor and as a speaker. He always asked good questions and both on the camera and off the camera. And so those questions always led to good discussions. And uh, for all those reasons, I'm gonna miss Doug Petcash. Good luck, Doug. I learned a lot about politics and government from, from Lieutenant Governor Bedke as when he was Speaker of the House too, just in those off-camera conversations about the way things work. So I appreciate Mayor McLean and Doug Holloway with Parks and Rec too, and, and all the leaders who appeared on my show. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that, that said their thanks. They weren't able to get videos in. But, Doug, we do have to go to break. Yeah. Final goodbye. Hey, it has been an absolute pleasure to, to be the host of this show, and I am honored to be able to hand it off to my friend and very talented colleague, Joe. So take it away, my friend. Bring it in. Love you, man. Good luck. Love you, too. If your garage has become a breeding ground for bugs and pests, it's time to call A1 Garage Door Service. Hi, Tommy Mello here. Replacing the bottom rubber on your garage door can have a huge impact on the number of bugs you see in your garage and in your home. As the weather starts to warm up, keep those creepy crawlers outside by calling A1 Garage Door Service today. And remember, the garage door is the smile of your home, so don't wait. Call A1 Garage Door Service and you'll be smiling today. A1 from day Summer won't last forever, but during Toyota's national sales event, you can make memories that will. Come on. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> Where's my mom? Just be in the moment. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Visit your local Toyota dealer to learn more. Reserve yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Hurry in and save up to $200 on a set of four tires, plus get an extra $50 off with financing. Les Schwab Tires. The new 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X is equipped to conquer the great outdoors or the great indoors. Welcome to the peak of premium off-roading.
Or get 0.9% APR on 2023 2.7 liter turbo high output engine Sierra light duty elevation models. Plus, current eligible GMC owners get over 5,200 total value. Well, welcome back to Viewpoint here on your Sunday morning. Yes, we've had to say goodbye to Doug Pet Cash, but Viewpoint rolls on and we're getting right back into business. My guest here this morning is the Secretary of State, Phil McGrain. Phil, thank you so much for joining us here this morning on Viewpoint. Thank you, Joe. It's always good to be with you. And I know that we said goodbye to Doug, but real quickly, I know that you worked with Doug for many years uh, at, at the Ada County level and then now, of course, at Secretary of State. Um, what are your thoughts on Doug's, I mean, work here at KTVB? You know, I can still very vividly remember standing with Doug for almost a half hour on election night, us just talking about the election cycle, everything going on, our personal lives. Um, he's been a huge comp contributor to the community and to our state. Uh, Doug will definitely be missed, uh, especially just his leadership in this political role. But I know that you're ready and willing to step into his footsteps. Yeah, so let's, I guess, let's get into it then. Uh, one of the hot topics that we've been talking on the 208 about is the Republican caucus or primary situation. I know there's a little bit of confusion out there, but let's try to solve it. If, if the primary situation happened today, what would the election look like in Idaho? Yeah, so in terms of the process, I think going back to the legislative session, uh, legislators were really trying to look out for voters and taxpayers uh, at the heart of it. I think one of the big things is the cost of elections is huge, uh, particularly when you run two separate elections that are similar. And so in terms of the primary election, we always have our May primary. That's when we vote for the legislatures, when we vote for governor. And so there was a real concerted effort to merge the presidential primary with the state primary so voters only had to show up to the polls once. Uh, it would also save nearly $3 million dollars for voters by merging those two together. Um, as you're well aware, uh, during the legislative process, uh, there was some resistance to parts of that. And so now we find ourselves in a situation where we still have the state primary in May, as we always will, um, but the issue is with the presidential primary and whether or not we'll have a presidential primary or we'll go to a caucus. And right now things are headed towards a caucus. Because right now, from what I understand, there's nothing to set up a primary in March because of the way the laws are. Yeah, the way the the law came out, there was actually a pretty broad effort among legislators um, really trying to increase turnout in the elections as well as save tax dollars. Um, unfortunately, the process for candidates to file and be placed on the ballot for president was missing from that initial legislation, and so that's left a hole. Um, there's talk of, you know, the potential of a special legislative session or something else to address that. You know, personally, I think any opportunity there is to ensure Idahoans have the opportunity to go to the polls and vote, that's the best path forward. Uh, but right now, both political parties are looking at caucuses sometime in the March time frame in order to allow people to select the delegates who are going to take the nominee to the national conventions. Because I, I know there are people that are confused about the caucus versus primary thing, and they say, well, hold on a second, I thought the state always ran primary elections. I guess the caveat here is the parties run this caucus on their own. This is kind of out of your hands. That, that's exactly right. Uh, when you hear primary and voting, that's when the state runs the election, just like our May elections. But when you hear caucus, those are are a private run events by the political parties. So the Republican Party is looking at March 2nd. I think the Democratic Party is looking later into March. Um, but those would be hosted and funded by the political parties, whereas traditionally what we're used to is showing up to your regular polling location and it's a state funded primary at that time. I have had questions that uh, viewers had sent to me via text message that had said, okay, so caucus security. I know the state of Idaho, they really invest in the primary security. What security protocols would there be for, be for a caucus? Was it just on the party to supply those? You know, that's a great question in terms of just the topic of election integrity, the security and safety of our elections. A lot goes into our state-run elections. Um, cybersecurity is a huge function of our office, just protecting the equipment and the infrastructure that we have. Um, that's different when it goes to a caucus. The caucuses, again, are run by the political parties. Um, that's part of why when we talk about funding in this whole situation, merging the two elections into one really saves the state considerable funds because we are the safest and secure provider because we're also one of the more costly providers. But that's why it's easy and convenient for voters to go to their local elementary school and vote. Um, I think that's one of the challenges we'll see with the caucuses as well is not nearly as many locations. It won't be just going down the street. You'll actually have to go to one central location in your county or legislative district, however it works out. Um, it's going to be a lot more work on the parties. Uh, you know, there will be support from the state letting people know what's happening, but it just won't be the same as going to your polls and voting. And I know a popular question in the Idaho politics world right now is, well, can it still change? 
And to me, it seems like something has to give. Either lawmakers need to reverse the tax bill or the Idaho Republican Party needs to change their party platform. And until something happens with that, it seems like we're just kind of stuck here. Yeah, we're in a difficult spot. I think, honestly, a special legislative session would be a good thing for the state to ensure that Idahoans get the chance to go to the polls and vote. I've been talking to numerous legislators. You know, that was their vision was to increase turnout. Uh, the, that could still happen at this point. Um, something's got to give, but you're right. It really is whether the legislature takes action and does something, the parties change something. Um, right now, every indication is that we will be holding caucuses in March. That's the path we're on right now. Um, but there still is time between now and then. I think all voters, as well as all elected officials, myself included, will be really feeling this uh, when we get into the spring and we're in the heat of the presidential election and trying to determine what is the best course for the state. So I know, you know, when you're watching programs like this, you want resolution. But on this topic specifically, we will have to keep you informed because there's no resolution right now. It's, it's what it is, as you just highlighted. There's lots of conversations. So I think that's one of the things between the governor's office, legislative leadership, the party leaders. Um, but right now, there isn't a consensus on what the right path forward is. And so I'm hopeful we'll find an opportunity for Idahoans to vote. Moving forward to some other topics, um, I know that voter registration, hot topic right now, some things Idahoans might need to know. Mr. Secretary of State, you're the man to tell us. What do yeah. Idahoans need to know? We've had some updates to our voter registration laws out of this uh, last session. Uh, one of the big things is just the ID requirements. In the past, it really depended on how you registered to vote. Um, there, If you registered at the polls on election day, which you've reported on, you had to bring your ID, proof of residence, and bring all those documents to the polls. Uh, if you registered online, you needed a driver's license but didn't need to prove residency. And if you voted by mail, you didn't have any of those. Uh, we. You, uh, created standard process for all of those. So now when any Idahoan registers to vote, they will need to show photo ID and proof of residence. Um, the county clerks are helping work through the process with the upcoming August election um, to make sure that all of that's in place. Um, but people will experience some changes in terms of just the additional requirements to make sure that we know who you are and that you live here and you're resident of Idaho each time you vote. And I think that gives everyone confidence in terms of the security of the overall process. And if you have a student ID, you can vote with it till the end of this calendar year? That's correct. Student IDs will be accepted through both the August and November elections. Uh, that law changes in January. Um, it's also worth noting anybody who doesn't have an ID, and it could be a student, but it could also be just somebody who's elderly and no longer drives, there is now a free ID card available through the Motor Vehicle Office for anybody who needs one for voting. And we've got information links to our website at ktvb.com. Um, before we wrap up this segment, you're, I guess, almost nine months into your role as the Secretary of State of Idaho. You went through a legislative session. You went through a summer. Now heading into another election season. What's it been like over the last nine months? I think you know, and uh, certainly KTV view viewers know, I've been doing elections for a long time, but it's still been a big learning curve in terms of just understanding the role here, working with my peers across the country. You know, I've been fortunate to get to spend time with Secretary Raffensperger from Georgia quite a bit. Um, I've built a really good relationship with the county clerks throughout the state who are the ones, the boots on the ground running our elections. Um, it's been a great experience. I love all the partnerships we've been able to build, and I'm really excited to find new ways to get more voters engaged and just increase participation throughout the state. I know a lot of our viewers recognize you as the Ada County Clerk because you joined us for a lot of election mornings. I know you stood out there at 5 a.m. with me plenty of days, even as the deputy clerk. Um, for you, biggest differences between the chief clerk of Idaho's largest county to being the secretary of state of the whole state. I mean, how big of a jump was it? You know, I think most people know me as the bald guy with glasses, but I am an elections junkie, and I'm going to continue in this role to be an elections junkie. The scope has just expanded. We're looking all over the state, uh, working and really trying to figure out how can we improve the election process in Idaho, make sure that we have safe, secure elections, but at the end of the day, really make sure that voters have the opportunity to turn out. Um, it's a lot of fun being able to work on this scale and work with others, especially like working with the legislature to make sure Idaho stands out across the country. And a, a major difference uh, from being Ada County Clerk, I see you traveling around the state. That's a much different change. I, I was in Salmon last week. Uh, I, we've been visiting election offices in the August election, we're going to start our morning over in Idaho Falls, uh, just making sure the process works everywhere. And it is a big change, it's a big change for me, uh, but it's exciting to get to see all the different things and find the ways that we can continue to improve things here. All right, before we wrap up, what is the one thing you find that Idahoans are most passionate about in terms of what is under your scope? At our scope, oh, it's easily elections, right? I, the Secretary of State's office does a lot of things, the keeper of the seal, the business records, but people want to make sure they have a voice. Uh, politics is big, as you know, through the 208 and here on 
on viewpoint. Um, so just making sure that we provide the easiest, smoothest pass for voters, that's one of our main focuses. Well, Phil, I'll have to uh, check the records here. I think my first politics interview was with you and you're the, the deputy over at Ada County. Now my first interview here on Viewpoint, the Secretary of State, Phil McGrain. Thank you so much for joining us. Viewpoint's going to step aside, but we will be right back to wrap it up after this. Hi, I'm Brian Gary. A lot of replacement windows may look the same, but there are huge differences and variations of materials that we use. Ted from Renewa by Anderson is here to tell us the differences. Well, wood windows look great, but they need painting every few years. And aluminum windows are strong, but they conduct heat and cold. Now, vinyl windows might be maintenance free, but they warp over time. Anderson recognized that there really wasn't a product out there that solved the most frustrating window problems. So Anderson created Fibrex. Right, Fibrex is our exclusive composite material. And while wood and vinyl expand and contract a lot, our Fibrex barely expands and contracts at all. So our weather tight seals stay weather tight, even in the worst and most extreme temperature swings. And the look of your window is completely customizable. That's right, we have a variety of window styles and nine beautiful colors. And you can choose your hardware, your grill styles, and we also have four beautiful styles of Anderson patio doors. And it's incredible what your glass can do. Yeah, let me demonstrate this. I'm gonna use this thermometer to get a temperature of the interior of our room here, it's 74 degrees. But if I shoot this heat lamp, and it's 331 degrees. So you're telling me on the inside now, Yep, if I shoot this through the glass, it's right down to about room temperature, 77 degrees. So our glass keeps all the warm air in your house in the wintertime and out of your house during the summertime. That's a really cool demonstration. Thanks, Ted. Right now, Renewal by Anderson has a huge discount. It's Renewal by Anderson's 31-day sale. Before August 31st, save $485 on every window and save $835 on every patio door. Save an extra $750 on your entire project. Plus, don't pay anything for one year. Our 31-day sale ends August 31st. For a free appointment during our sale, call 208-427. 8900. Welcome back to Viewpoint. Thank you so much for joining us here this week. We are embarking on a new adventure together, Hugh, on Viewpoint. Again, thank you so much to my mentor, Doug Petcash. He will be leaving KTVB. This is his final appearance, actually, on Channel 7 here in Boise. Going over to Columbus, Ohio, of course, we'll be keeping track of Doug as he will be in the thick of the politics world in Ohio. A lot going to go through there. Who knows? Maybe we'll have Doug back on the show as a political expert coming up in the future. Again, though, thank you to my guest, Secretary Phil McGrain as we were talking with Secretary McGrain about all types of voter registration stuff you need to know about. You can go to our website, ktvb.com, click in the politics link, and we'll be able to give you everything you need to know about elections in Idaho. Okay, it's a new dawn, a new age here on Viewpoint. Thanks for joining us. We will be back next week. For now, though, have a great day.